My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. <laughs> Father, we thank you for power, we thank you for fire. Command that your fire rains in this room. I command that every arrow is neutralized. In the name of, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I command every arrow to backfire. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
we vow to give you the glory for the entrance of thy word give it light it give it understanding to the simple by your special grace tonight i reach forward into the very heart of my hearers and i make eternal deposit in the name of the lord jesus i thank you for that anointing that makes preaching easy and hearing a delight we thank you for open heavens we thank you that the portals of heavens are open for us thank you for power thank you for miracles signs and wonders and we vow to give you the glory precious holy spirit in jesus name and everyone shouted the living amen will you clap for jesus are you sure you are clapping for jesus can you go ahead and take your seat please glory be to god hallelujah tell somebody i love jesus i said tell somebody all right did the person hear you glory be to jesus <laughs> Glory be to God. The love of Jesus is all that matters in this life. Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 4. He said, and his banner over me was love. His banner over me is love. He brought me to the banqueting house. And his banner over me was love. When we're singing the song, he said, let his banner be raised. The banner which must be raised is love for God. Somebody with me all that the godhead they want from you is love one day they tried to tempt jesus they said jesus please show us the greatest of the law the greatest jesus said it's very simple the law is just is one but it's one food one food two two in one amen <laughs> he said the greatest is love the lord thy god with all of your heart all of your mind all of your strength he said, and the second is like unto it. Matthew 27, 22 verse 37. He said, the second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as yourself. Then Jesus further on said that. He said, a new commandment I give you. That you love one another as I have loved you. So, you are not supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. Hello? This is just by the way. Some say, how can I love you more than myself? That was Old Testament. He said, now love people as he loved you. And how did Jesus love us? More than himself. For he died. He said, for no greater love than this, that a man should lay down his life for his brethren. Somebody with me. So Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto the first. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. As thy you said this one, but I'm not teaching on love. When you go to John, Jesus upgraded this verse. He was summarizing the law. Do you agree with me? Are you sure you, you, you agree? We don't have to go there. All right. But the essence of all that we must do of the law is love. One day, Jesus had promised Peter that, Peter, upon you I'll build this uh, church. You are the rock. Upon this rock I'll build my house or my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Then, the moment Jesus left, Peter said, friends, me, I go a fishing. <laughs> if we follow this, Jesus will be, will be very hungry. Let's go to John 21. Let's start from verse 4, verse 3. He said, me, I go a fishing. Not knowing that all the others wanted to go a fishing, but they just needed one person to lead them. <laughs> then Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also will go with you. How can somebody say, I'm going to fish and suddenly everybody said, we are going to go with you. It means they were all thinking the same thing. They just needed the gang leader. <laughs> they just needed a person who would just move them. And I'm sure at times there are things you want to do, but you need somebody to just lead you. It can be good or bad. Do you agree with me? Some of you right now, I'm so, when we stand before God, we said, that God, the things I did, it was not me, it was my friends. They just motivated me. But Peter was the great motivator among the disciples. So when he said he's going a fishing, they all went. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. It means they had already made plans. There was a ship waiting for them. And that night, they caught... Oh, can you shout it? <laughs> Tell someone the race is not to the swift. <laughs> that night, they caught nothing. But when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him, No. A 33-year-old man is calling a bearded man, Children. 
Jesus is amazing. <laughs> and he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship. How did he know that fish will be on the right side? And you shall find. They cast them for, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fish. They have been trying all night long. Now, all night long means that they have gone run about 360. So when Jesus told them to fish, they had been fishing. Tell somebody it's not your effort. <laughs> Therefore, that, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Suddenly, John remembered, it is only Jesus who has ever done this. It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he get his fisher's coat onto him, for he was naked. It means when they are fishing, they are naked. Now, naked means naked. And did cast himself into the sea. Next verse. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land. But as it was, as it were, 200 cubits, dragging a net with fishes. As soon as then they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish lay thereon and bread. The fact that they caught the fish was a blessing. But Jesus had gone a step further and prepared the fish. Amazing. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fish, and hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and eat. And none of the disciples there asked him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and take a bread and give it them, and the fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. And when they had died, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? The most important question Jesus wants to prove to Peter is that you can go a fishing, you can do anything, but whatever you are going to get, I can give to you in a split of a second. The most important thing I can give to you overnight is love for me. Can I repeat? Jesus was trying to tell them that all the things you are looking for that you don't sleep, you are worried and crying about overnight, he can give it to you. But the most valuable thing in his universe is your love for the master. That one, he can't give it to you. You must develop it. And that is the most important thing to him. The seek he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all this fish and bread you are looking for shall be added to you. His van over you is love. What you God has no problem when we come to church and we pray for stuff. No, he told us to do that. But as we are asking and demanding stuff from him, make sure your greatest pursuit is love for the master. Love for Yahweh. When you understand the names of God, the name, by now you know that the name of the God you serve is Yahweh. You agree with me? When you read the Bible, the first expression of God is called Elohim. And Elohim is a general expression for the mighty one. So, when you say, how many people have dogs? Where, where is uh, Minister Thompson? What's the name of her dog? Solomon. <laughs> a dog can be called Bruno or Rambo. <laughs> so everybody has dogs. So you can see a dog and say that this is a dog. But Minister Thompson will call Solomon my dog. So her dog is Solomon. But there are several dogs. When the Bible uses the expression Elohim, he's talking about the mighty one. And several other beings can qualify for the expression El. Does it make sense? But if you study the Bible, they always qualify your Elohim. And they say that, oh Lord my God. And when they say, oh Lord my God, the word they are using or the name they are using is Yahweh. Now the name Yahweh means the eternal one. But it is only used when he's talking about the God who is in a relationship with you. I repeat. The name Yahweh is used when he's talking about a God in relationship with mankind. Meaning that what the God you serve really wants is a relationship. He is not here to be in a transactional partnership with you. Give me a job. Take a job. We are done. When you need something, come. No. 
whether you need a job or not, when you have all you need or you have nothing you ever need, you are in a relationship with Yahweh. That is the highest pursuit of all this we do. So that if people see your face sad, it should, it should be because your love affair with the master is affected. Not because you lack something. If they see that you are happy, it's not because you got something, but it's because your love affair with the master is increased. One day, Hannah was sad because he didn't have children. And Elkanah said, why are you crying? Am I not more than enough, like seven sons to you? Hannah said, no, no, no. I just want a son. And at times, that's how we relate with God. God is not enough for us. But anytime you are saying Yahweh, your attention should be on a relationship with the God. With the God. There's a song we, we sing, Elohim Eternal One. That Elohim Eternal One is simply saying, Yahweh, my God. Because Eternal One is Yahweh. And Elohim is my God. Can we sing that song? And lift up your right hand. As we sing, I just want you to fall in love consciously. Tell him that, Father, I want a good, deep, sincere, practical relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus. Elohim Eternal One That your God Elohim is not just Elohim. Elohim. It's a God who has a relationship with you. You never change. Thank you, Jesus. Elohim Eternal One Elohim You never change Elohim Elohim Eternal Elohim
so much we love you sincerely we love you more and more in jesus name and everyone shouted the blessed amen clap for jesus hallelujah Glory be to God. all right before the fast we started a series the mystery of blessing and cursing and we had to pause and fast and so we are coming back to where we left off is that correct how many people enjoy the fast Love for Jesus. How many people want us to do another one very soon? <laughs> All right. I think this one I have to take a snapshot of your heart, what your heart is saying. <laughs> Glory be to God. But it's always good to fast. It's always good to fast. If you get to fast, it's good. Yes. But food is nice. Hunger is painful. But fasting is powerful. Amen. We have to try and fast more. Glory be to God. Can we do it every... <laughs> if, if we do debate right now, we won't close the service. It started with one month, then three months. I had six months. <laughs> Glory be to God. But we want to just resume from where we took off. The truth of the matter is, well, we have entered in the world. You don't have to be a prophet to know that where the world is going, you need extra help. For the past, is it two weeks, three prime ministers have resigned. You don't listen to the news. I don't know which news you listen to. <laughs> Was it today it, the Italian prime minister resigned? With the cabinet, everyone. The UK one too. Was it last week or so? Sri Lanka. The, the whole country is yes yes it's like you saw how they were swimming in the swimming pool at the palace yes and it's, it's a wave countries are going bankrupt countries yes and if you check inflation rate every country is setting a record in inflation is that correct it's a record so the question is what is happening why are the professors from Harvard why are the smart people those who wrote the economic books what the wise men, what are they? They are still learning. They are still writing. They have not finished. I like that answer. It, it is to tell us that our help and our strength as men is limited. The earlier you accept it and believe it, it will help you. So that you don't run your life thinking that my country is a powerful nation. That my party, my president is super smart. No, don't trick yourself. Don't deceive yourself. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say uh, no 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 I have a good company companies are shutting down I, I, heard, I heard today there's a, a, an investment company called BlackRock for the past 6 months they have lost clients money 1.7 trillion dollars in 6 months from January to no these people are smart people super smart they are, it's an american country they have all the software to make sure they don't lose but in six months they lost 1.7 trillion it can collapse a country's economy so 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 the earlier you realize that where we are you need spiritual help the better it will be for you true you must find ways of engaging spirit beings contacting spiritual forces and this message will help you if you understand it decide that you always get an income of a blessing with all thy gettings get a blessing hallelujah so we said that this life is all about blessing and cursing the first thing which happened to man the first program god gave to man was a blessing when god had created man in genesis 1 verse 20 says he said let us make man and when man was made he said that and god blessed man so the first software in man was a blessing now man survived with the blessing and he was blessed then after the blessing the next thing we changed the dynamics of the garden and the dynamics was man, of man was a curse do you remember genesis 1 there's a blessing everything is perfect the devil comes sin provokes a curse 
Then man is cursed and everything goes bad. Correct? Then this curse matures. Then Noah, after the flood, comes on the scene and he organizes a sacrifice. Genesis 8 verse 20. I'm just trying to do a recap then we'll add something to it. Please, what I'm telling you, if you go to heaven, you will hear nothing more than what I'm telling you. Because this life is a transaction of blessing and cursing. Every day you are transacting one of them. You are where you are. Based on the sum total, the net <laughs> of the blessing and cursing. True. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord was in heaven, but he could smell it. A sweet savour. Hmm. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I, will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. Now look at something very interesting happening. Man had committed sin and based on the sin, God had cursed man. Cursed the ground for man's sake. Then in the course of time, the imaginations of man had caused God to bring flood to wipe away. Even after the flood, the Bible still said the imagination of man's heart was still evil. Did you see that? It is still evil, but God said, although it is still evil, I will not curse. Why? Somebody had done something so that there can be the presence of evil, but a curse can be on pause if you know what to do. What I said doesn't make sense to you. It's still evil in man's heart, but God said that from today I'm changing the law. I'm not going to just curse the ground for man's sake. But based on what Noah did, verse 22. Verse 22. While the earth remained, there must be seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So based on what Noah has done, what is going to happen is that you are going to reap what you sow. Although there is evil still in the heart of man, if I decide to follow the evil, then after every 400 years, I must kill the people and just get a Noah and his family, then we'll start all over again. But we can't do that. So what we are going to do is that now it is up to you. The seed time and harvest. What you sow, you will reap. Does it make sense? So you can dis determine your cycles based on what Noah had done. Then Genesis 9 verse 1. God comes on the scene and he's, he begins to bless Noah again. And God bless Noah. So you see that when you study the first 10 chapters of the book of Genesis is either there's a blessing or there is a curse and we can extend it even till now what is happening to you or to me or to nations today is either a blessing or a curse it's one of them I have what I call the laws of advancement it takes a lot of forces to make you advance either forward or backwards and one of the significant forces of advancement which is affecting you every day of your life whether you agree or not is this blessing or cursing it's affecting everyone you might agree you might not agree but it does not change that fact true listen to me the bible says for this life for by strength shall no man prevail people can agree or they might not even acknowledge that no 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 it's just by my strength it won't change the fact that for by strength shall no man prevail this life is a battle of blessing and cursing. When David met Goliath and they were going to fight, I was thinking it's just, I'm stronger than you, let's fight. Before they fought, they transacted blessing and cursing. First Samuel 17, verse 43. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Try and get into the word, then we'll pray. 43. Thank you, Lord. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his... Question. We are going to fight. Why should you curse me? Is it not give and take? <laughs> Don't assume that when nations fight, they only fight physically. You are deceiving yourself. Don't assume that when people are fighting, there is competition. You, you, soccer, NBA... Don't think that it's just by their draining. No. You are deceiving yourself. You can go and ask them. For by strength shall no man prevail. Don't think that when presidents decide to do politics or senate seat, they are fighting over one 
see it or throw. They just do it by physical strength. No. For by strength shall no man prevail. So, Goliath knows this principle and he, he has started trying to curse David. And I define to you blessing and cursing. I said that blessing and cursing, they have the same definition. Blessing is an empowerment. Curse is an empowerment. But the blessing is empowered to succeed. A curse is empowered to fail. So it's all empowerment. So when Goliath was cursing David, he was empowering the guy to fail. So based on the goals he used, David had a greater God, a greater force. So the guy could not be cursed. Are you, are you sure you are with me? Hello, are you sure you are here? So you must understand how these things work. And the moment you know how it works, you can use it for yourself or you can use it against your adversary. Can I repeat it? When you know the dynamics of blessing and cursing, you can use it in your favor or use it against your adversary. I told you about how Balak, the king of Moab, he heard that Israel is coming and he cannot fight these people because they are so big, blessed, mighty. So he goes to hire a prophet called Balaam and said, Balaam, I have heard that the one you bless is blessed. And the one you curse is cursed. There are a people coming. They are too mighty for me. Can you come? I will give you anything you want. Just come and curse them for me. Wow. What a military strategy. Come and just curse them for me. And God will not allow Balaam to curse. Because if Balaam curses these people, they will be empowered to fail. Is somebody with me? Why will a king decide to go and pay people money that come and curse somebody for me? When you are fighting over stuff with people, eh? it is smart for you to do something in the night and in the secret. Because your adversary, you don't know what they are doing. <laughs> Maybe you and somebody, you are fighting over one boy. And you, you, you are just relaxed at me because I'm, I'm just beautiful. He, he, he's my man. When we're, when we're married, where were you? <laughs> oh, how great that was. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, do something in the night. Oh. Do something. What did I say? Do something all by yourself. It doesn't have to be in the night, but do it by yourself. <laughs> it can be just in your car or in your home. But don't just assume that no, I'm, I'm, I qualify, I deserve it. No. Israel was just moving about, not knowing that somebody has hide a malam. <laughs> malam, balam, they all rhyme. Is that not correct? <laughs> they had somebody to encase them. So when, I'm sure they were eating in the morning and somebody was, this, curse these people, can you see them? They, they were even sleeping and somebody said, curse them. They were even driving. Somebody said, this is the one, curse them. Don't just assume that Ah, what have I done to anybody to hurt me? Why, why, why should somebody curse me? For what? For what? No, for everything they will curse you. <laughs> Is somebody with me? So, you have to put premium value on blessing and on cursing. I just want to give you seven facts or characteristics about blessing and cursing. It's for both. Then we'll pray. Are you ready? The first thing I want to bring your attention to is that Blessing or cursing is quantifiable. It is tangible. It is tangible. And because it's tangible, you can quantify it. When somebody blesses you, it's not like the person has just released words in the atmosphere. That, oh, I'm just blessed. No, you can count how many times you have been blessed. In the same way, when somebody has cursed you, you can count how many times you have been cursed in a year. Genesis 27, verse 37. Oh, I love Jesus. Are you sure you do love Jesus? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord. Wow. A blind man sitting in a room. And he's saying that me, I am blind, I'm sitting in this room, but this guy, I have made him your Lord. He's your boss. And all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto you, my son? Next verse. And Esau said to his father, Have you but 
One blessing, my father. Say one blessing. It means we can have two blessings. Three blessings. I said blessings, they are tangible and they are quantifiable. You can quantify them. Numbers 24 verse 10. This year, I want to ask you, how many blessings have you gotten this year? This year? How many? Some, no, no, take your time. Now. Let me give you two minutes. Just say, how many? Some say, many, many. Where? Where, did, where was the many? You don't assume you are blessed. Either you are blessed or you, you should know that. One, two, three. You, you should know from today. You should decide that in August, I will get three blessings. September, two. October, I think I can get five. This thing you do consciously. The same way you do budget. That our budget, <laughs> our budget for the month is $10,000. The same way, have a budget for blessing and cursing. Do you understand? I'm not exaggerating what I'm saying. We have assumed life too much. We have lived life that what will be will be. I'm just praying. People are praying, but they cannot tell you how many blessings they got this month. How many blessings? They can not tell you why they got the blessing. They can't. But this is something like you know. You know when your next paycheck is coming, you know. Some of you got it today. Today is what Thursday. Oh, plenty of people got it today. Some of you is tomorrow. Some of you is once a month, so you are waiting for two more. You you know, in the same way, plan for your blessings because you can quantify them. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam. And he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam. Just this even when I was in the office, I realized that my quota for blessing is not up. So I had to provoke a blessing in the office before I came here. Yes. It's not guesswork. Please. Don't assume that I'm blessed. You should know you are blessed. Where you were blessed. How you got blessed. And Balak's anger was scandal against Balaam. And he smote his hands together. The guy was angry. He said, ah! What are you doing? And Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse my enemies. Imagine, I call you. Come, come and curse my enemies. Curse them for me because you are powerful. They are spirit beings. When people say, of when you watch a movie and the people say that people have gone to, uh, no, be on your feet, don't worry. You, people have gone to uh, Jujuman or Malam or and to curse people. This thing is real and it's true. Zoom. Don't use technology to write these things off. Because the people behind the technology, they are practicing these things. So don't assume that, no, no, this is primitive thinking. How great thou art. <laughs> and he smote his hands together and Balak said, I call you to come and curse these my enemies. And behold, thou hast all together blessed them three times. How did the guy know? They were blessed three times. It's tangible and it's quantifiable. Take your seat. So blessings are tangible. You can count them. You can quantify them. So you can plan. This is my year of undeniable exploit. How many blessings did I get this year? How many blessings did I provoke this year? And I'm sure maybe next week or so I'll tell you how to. You can provoke a blessing any day, any time, anywhere at where you can plan it. Therefore now, flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee to great honor. But lo, the Lord has kept thee back from honor. <laughs> Next. So the first point about blessing and curse is that it's tangible, it's quantifiable. For example, a curse. You hurt one lady. The lady cares you. You went to the second one, hurt them. You have gotten two cares because you have hurt two ladies. The reverse is true. You hurt one man. The man cares you. You went to the second one. They curse you. You went to the third one. You got three curses. Hello. And Balaam said, <laughs> what I'm saying. The next thing about a blessing and curse I want to bring your attention to is that places can be cursed. Objects or things can be cursed or blessed. It's, it's both ways. Persons can be cursed. Activities or events can be cursed or blessed. I repeat. A place can be cursed. 
a thing or an object can be blessed. People, that one is very obvious, can be blessed. Then events or activity, a blessing or a curse can be attached to it. Hello? Are you sure you are with me? One day, David heard the story that Saul was dead. Saul and Jonathan, they are dead. And do you know where they died? They fought on a mountain called Mount Geboa. And that was where they died. The moment David heard, David got sad and said, How? Mount Gilboa, how did you allow Saul to die on you, an anointed man? Mount Gilboa, this, this, this case is for you. Second Samuel 1 verse 21. Ye, mountain, ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no deal, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fuels of offering, for there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away, and the shield of Saul as though he had not been anointed. If you go to Mount Geboa, there is no deal. Right now, after 3,000 years, if you go to Israel right now, there is no deal. They planted trees. The Jewish National Fund decided to plant trees to make the place green. But based on the case of David, there is no deal on that mountain. After 3,000 years. So a place is cursed. You, 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 you don't have to do it. If you get to the place and you are looking for deal, you won't find it. Why? That place has been cursed. So at times, the land you are going to buy to build on, you must work on the land because at times the land has been cursed. At times a city or a nation has been cursed. So you must consciously work on places. Is somebody with me? You don't just get out and say that, I like that neighborhood. I see the flowers. I see. <laughs> no. No. A thousand times no. I think I told you one day I was going to dedicate somebody's house. As I was praying, I heard that any Indian spirit I cursed. Not knowing that the real estate agent had told these people that one night, they saw that a group of Indians had come to the neighborhood and they were doing something. So the real estate agents in the night followed them. When he came, they too, they bought a land and they were conjuring over there. And when they did that, I didn't know. And I just said, Indian spirit, what they did brought a spirit in the neighborhood. I heard a story, there's a place in Dallas. The Indians, the place. Any person you come there, your job will start going down. There's a place in Dallas. Somebody told me clear in Dallas. You see, this life is spiritual. Tell someone life is spiritual. So places can be cursed and places can also be blessed. At times you don't know who is living in the neighborhood. But when you find out at times you can know that the neighborhood is blessed. Why? Based on the pronouncement in the atmosphere. Glory be to God. Objects can be blessed. Things can be blessed. Things can be cursed. One day there was a certain man called Obedidom. The guy had no plans to be blessed. He had no purpose. He was just living his life. Then David was on his way and the ark had killed somebody. David said, hey, I don't like this ark. Then Obedidom, David, this ark killed somebody. You don't like it in your house. So Obedidom should take it and die. Obedidom was very ignorant. He picked the ark. The Bible said, the moment the ark entered Obedidom's house, the guy was blessed. For three months, the guy was just, he was not there. He didn't change his work schedule, his strategy. He didn't go to a new company. Listen to me. An element can visit you and your life has changed. Second Samuel 6 verse 11. Objects, objects, objects. Somebody can pray over a handkerchief for you. And that element in your house will be a blessing. People have gone, they travel. They went to a nice place. They went to Asia. They went to Thailand. They saw an artifact. They, I, like, I like such paintings. I like such paintings. They put the paintings there, brought it to their house, and that was the source of their trouble. Yes. One prayer warrior, of course, Cindy Jacobs. I hope the story, I, I will remember exactly how she said. He went to Haiti, bought uh, a picture, brought to the house. The moment he brought the picture, he had severe back pains. The doctors couldn't help him. Everyone prayed, it won't work. He was praying one, she was praying one day. God said, it is the thing you bought from Haiti. Go and throw it away. He went to throw it away. And instantly the pain vanished. Ben Hinn told a story about how his parents got born again. Ben Hinn, the great man of God. He said he has evangelized them. Prayed to them. He has done everything. They are not getting born again. One day he's praying. God said the picture on the wall. He picked the picture and there was a fireplace. He put it in the fireplace. That day the parents got born again. Ah. So elements can carry a curse. And elements can carry a blessing. Oh, yes, yes. 
So one of the things you want to learn to do is that when you buy anything, name them. The Bible says when the vessels of the temple, when we buy some, something, I come and name them. It's called holy unto the Lord. That's what the Bible says, holy unto the Lord. Name things, holy unto the Lord. So these speakers, although they are from, I don't know the brand, but I call them holy unto the Lord. I don't care what they, but it's called holy unto the Lord. When you buy a car, speak, give the car a name. Name it, holy unto the Lord. Because you don't know who built the car. Some engineers can be devils, three of us. Some of them too can be pastors, three of us. Since you don't know, sanctify everything. Because objects can be blessed or cursed. Right. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obedidom. The Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obedidom and all his household. Because of an ark. Because of just an ark. A box. It was wooden. Shitty wood. Covered with gold. It enters your house. You are blessed. It leaves your house. You are not blessed. Isn't it not amazing? One day, a tree was minding his business. The tree is called fig tree. The tree said, I'm not ready to produce figs today. Jesus got there because he was hungry. He said that from today, nobody will eat fruit of you again. They went. Matthew 11, 20. They came back the following day. The Bible said, Peter said, Hey! Jesus, the fig tree you cast has withered away. The fig tree was not the place. It was not the person. It was a tent. Things can be cursed. Businesses can be blessed. Businesses can be cursed. Then began he to upgrade the mark. Mark 11. Mark. Mark 11. Then began he to mark. mark. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried from the roots. Next. And Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. What have you blessed? What have you cursed? At times, school, back to school becoming very soon. As you buy stuff for your children, bless them, bless them, bless their computer, bless their pencil, bless their bag, bless the address, bless the address. Yes. This one I ordered from Macy's. It's so expensive. There's nothing wrong in buying from Macy's. But as you order in the night, when they are sleeping, go tell you, I release the anointing. It's blessed. Mahakopa hateketo. Bless it. Bless it. Why? Because garments can be blessed. Aprons can carry divine virtue. Oh, glory be to Jesus. So things can be blessed. Then the other one I said, persons, persons. That one you know. I won't say anything on that one. We'll come to events and activities at times there's an activity which has been cursed or blessed anyone who will, able, will be able to accomplish it gets the blessing or the curse example one day when they had brought down the walls of jericho joshua 6 verse 26 joshua said curse is the man who will decide to build the walls of jericho when he started building it his firstborn will die and when he's finishing with the gates the lastborn will die this is joshua after the words came down. Let's read. And Joshua adjudged, adjudged them at that time and said, Curse be the man. Now, that curse has no man's name on it. Is that correct? He didn't say A or B. He said the man. You just have to accomplish an activity and you are a beneficiary of the curse. <laughs> oh my goodness. Curse be the man before the Lord that arised and built this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundations thereof in his firstborn. And in his youngest son shall he set up the gates thereof. Wow. After 500 years. How many years? years. Talk to me. How many years? A certain young man with zeal and money and fame and power. He said, I'm going to build this thing. It's called Hiel of Bethel. 1 Kings 16.34. Start from verse 33. At times in a family, they would say that nobody should enter politics in this family. Nobody. Anyone who enters politics, A, 2, B, 4, 5. And you really know. In your zeal. There's nothing wrong. You can break it. But be conscious that what I'm trying to do, it has never been done. Father, if there be any case on this accomplishment, work on it. At times it's a blessing that the, the person who will build this church, the person who will do this, there's a blessing. You don't know. And God can move you. Do it. Do do it. Do this thing. Do it. Not knowing that God is trying to give you a generational blessing and you didn't know. I have made a groove. And I have did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Next. And in his days did 
Hiel, the Bethlehemite, built Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abraham, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his younger son, Segab, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun. 500 years. Time for Joshua. That's powerful. That is prophecy. He spoke that I don't care who will come. If you are the first person to do this thing, your firstborn, Vamos. Your lastborn, Vamos. So a young boy, Abraham had visions. I want to go, I want to be a doctor. But his father had entered an activity and has brought trouble to the young boy. A, a young boy, he's called Sigab. The last one said that I want to go into NFL. When I grow, the way I will be so rich. No, no, your father is going to do something which will bring judgment to you. Lift up your right hand. Say, in the name of Jesus, by mercy, I escape written judgments. By mercy, by grace, I escape written judgments. In the name of Jesus. We are already praying. So, just push. Just do it. In the same way too, there are blessings in families. People have pronounced blessing that this one, the person who married this, my daughter for me, God, visit him with blessing. And God is pushing you that way. Marry this daughter. Marry this daughter. There's a blessing attached to her. Hallelujah. Amen. So, blessing can be on places, person, events, and all that. How many did I give you? Only two. Amazing. Blessing and curses, they make you. Blessings and curses, they make you. They make you good or bad. They, they can make you. And what they can make you varies. Proverbs 10 verse 22. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. What makes a man is not the effort of the man. Am I encouraging you to be lazy a thousand times? No. Am I encouraging you to not work? No. But what will make you is more than your hard work. Proverbs 10, 22. 10, 22. The blessings of the Lord. Make it rich. The, project, the people who are projecting have to give you Bible reading assignment. So that even when my, my life was slip, you should know what I'm trying to say. Do you agree with me? Hallelujah. Clap for them at the back. They do an amazing job. Yes. But they can do better. Yes. <laughs> the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. So, there's a substance which make rich. It can make you rich. And he added no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, not only can you make you rich, it can make you great. It made Abraham great. When God blessed him, Genesis 12 verse 2. Oh, somebody is blessed. I said somebody is blessed. In the name of Jesus. I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. How am I going to make you great? By the blessing. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. 2435. Genesis 2435. Thank you Holy Spirit. We love you so much. These are the 24, 35. And the Lord had blessed my master greatly. And he has become. How did a guy become great? By the blessing. So blessings can make you great. In the same way, a curse can make you small. We'll pray one prayer at the end. But let me show you Isaiah 14 verse 20. He said the seed of evil doers cannot be great. The seed of evil, they cannot be renowned. 1420. The seed of evil doers cannot be renowned. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evil doers shall never be renowned. That's a case. It can so no matter what you do, you qualify, you do, but some way, somehow, by the time you are 40, you can be great. The seed of evil doers. We are going to pray that prayer at the end. So the third point I told you is that blessings and curses, they will make you either great, rich, happy, sad. At times, the source of many depression is a curse. Yes, yes, yes. No matter what you, you do, some people are never happy. You know, you don't know why. There's a curse responsible for that. Yeah. In, lift up your right hand. 
Baba. Speak in tongues for one minute. I break that shadow of depression over that family. Leave it the hegish. The hated depression. I break it over your life. Leave it that voice speaking to you to end it all I curse I curse I curse I curse I delete I curse I curse that being I destroy that being I command a blessing that make it happy and joyful to rest upon you mightily in the name of the Lord Jesus I hope you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed if um, you were blessed by this video make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend and also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ. Ask your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.